I'm El Saruri and I make large, mid to large scale paintings of women and men, bodies that have a sexual nature but are more to do with the human condition and like a duality between pleasure and suffering and I explore this in a range of like imagery, surreal, not so surreal, there are a lot of intrusions into the body, I'm very interested in how the body can be manipulated and like pulled and kind of like used rather as like a instrument to show the human but as like a way to show emotions and who we are inside <laughs> rather than uh, I guess just like surface level. weird experience because we had a uh, lockdown and Covid which meant like there was a lot of like time that I wasn't in the studio and then I had to work in my bedroom for like the majority of my second year. Third year was a bit better, we had a lot more studio time, moved into a different flat so I had a bigger bedroom but in second year I was confined to like this really small box room <laughs> and I had to like paint in there and sleep in there and do everything in there basically and uh, it kind of like, I guess like with limitations, like space was like the main one and because I worked like my first stage of working flat on the floor, I had to like make sure my paintings like fit on the floor and I was like creeping around them and I think having that like limitation of space was good because it's, it like kind of allowed me to like experience like working in like quite hard conditions. Which, and I still made like, still progressed and I still made paintings that I was really happy with. And I think that was like a huge turning point in my uh, practice was during that time. So it's quite nice to know that I can work in those conditions and still make work that I think is, um, yeah, like successful. So when I'm in a bigger space or have like easier conditions, I know that I can still make work <laughs> like regardless and it can still be successful. Well I use uh, the first layers like a mix of bleach and ink and I feel like this is quite significant because like a lot of my work is to do with like bodily fluids and wetness and like yeah just like fluidity and I think having like the first layer is something that is like super wet like I need to wait for it to dry overnight because it's so like the surface is like a pool that's why I have to work with it flat and then I go over and work in with like acrylic and kind of just like bring out the details um, and I think this like process of bringing out the details like it's, like really brings like the image together. I yeah, for the sculptures, I definitely prefer to use latex as like the main body of it, just because I don't know, I've used it for years, so it's quite like safe for me I guess but it's also nice to use because it's like got like a real like skin like skin like quality that's um yeah just quite creepy in a way I guess but also quite nice like when you touch it I guess most people won't be touching the sculptures but when you touch it like really does like kind of like feel like uh like skin kind of leathery feeling and like the way it moves and I think that's important just because I guess with the paintings they're very like about what's inside the body like coming out like blood, like uh, sweat, oh, all of those fluids but with the sculptures they're more like the skin and like they're like an extra skin so they're like kind of like the reverse of the paintings.
Well, there's, uh, I come up with a range of ways of coming up with the titles. Like, I usually have, because I write poems, I usually have like a lot of random lines that I've come up with, like in my notes, just in, like, in my head. And I think sometimes I have like a line and then I come up with a painting idea. So then I'll, the line of the poem would have already been the title because that's how I plan the painting. But then other times um, I do it and then I find like a line that would go well or maybe just like think of one. And then sometimes a poem comes out of that. Then also other times, if I really can't think of a um, title, I just scroll for Instagram and find like a random caption underneath somebody's um, uh, like photo. And normally they're like really good names. Like if you just take like half the sentence, so it comes up with there's like some pretty good ones. I think that I made a film and um, I named it. I didn't know what to call it, and I called it like our little patch of paradise. And I was just like a hashtag that my friend put on their like one of their like shit posts, and it was quite funny. <laughs> um, how did I get involved with guts? Well, I met, <laughs> it's quite funny actually, I probably got involved in like the least professional way ever. I met Ellie on Tinder like a few years ago. I never met up with her because I, I just never met up with her. And then like one day she messaged me because we got each other's Instagram and one day she messaged me and she was like, oh, and it was like during lockdown. She was like, do you want to be in like this uh, group? Uh, like this group show, just business relationship now, and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then like it basically went from there, and we got on really well, just like working together. And then, so yeah, and then she like uh, she was like super supportive, and like then wanted to like um, yeah like champion me. So it means like she like sorts out like a, a lot of sales and shows, but it's not she doesn't like limit me to like what I can do. I can have an opinion on stuff, be like, no, I don't want it to go to like that person or like, I don't want to do that. And it's like a healthy relationship really. Yeah, and it kind of just progressed from there. I think, I think I just want to get to a place with my work where I can make my work and not have to worry about providing for myself in other ways. I think that's probably my main goal. I think I also have like a goal to um, just like reach a point in my life where I'm very happy with what I'm making and what, what I'm doing in life. I think they're my two main goals. Um, I'd probably do like most promotion and like keep it up to date with like showing other people my work through Instagram because it's just like very accessible and easy to people to see very quick. And, but I do have a website where you can actually, there's more photos of my work on my website and more like photos of installs and stuff like that. So if you want to see my work deeper, you can look at my website. And that's, there's a link in, in my Instagram bio to it. And it's very like easy to navigate. But I think, yeah, because of putting all my paintings on Instagram, it just always feels like a bombardment because you're like making so much work that like, I kind of want Instagram to be like a semi person, like, you know, like, I like my friends are on it and stuff. So kind of like what my life is. So having like a website just makes it more professional. But yeah, I think, yeah, just having Instagram to be like, I have this exhibition, come to it this day and you can like keep reminding people. I think that's how the best way to like stay on top of my work and having it shown.